It is with great honor and pleasure that I get to present the Arena Legacy Award to a wonderful colleague and a personal friend, Dan Nelson. The Arena Legacy Award recognizes individuals who have made an outstanding contribution to the goals of Primer through significantly promoting the ethical conduct of research through mentoring, teaching, and leadership. This award this year embodies these attributes, and Dan, you are deserving of this award. Dan is a professor of social medicine and adjunct professor of pediatrics and the director of the Office of Human Research Ethics at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He previously held faculty appointments at Mayo Clinic, and before going to UNC, he was director of research in a clinical gastroenterology unit and chair of the Hospital Institutional Review Board. He is recognized as a leader in the field of human research protections. He has served as past president of ARENA, that was Primer's former membership division. He is a charter member of the Association for Accreditation of Human Research Protection Programs and is a former member of the Council for Certification of IRB Professionals. He is a founding co-chair of the IRB Sponsor Roundtable. He's a consultant to the Federal Office of Human Research Protection and has been a liaison to the National Bioethics Commission. Since 2005, he has co-chaired the Secretary's Advisory Committee on Human Research Protection subpart, for, uh, subpart A that advises the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services on regulations that govern human research protection. <coughs> Dan is quiet and soft-spoken, but his words and observations are always wise, practical, and insightful. At the risk of embarrassing Dan, and I will take full blame for it, I want to share some characteristics of Dan's personality that I think have served him well. I always believe that a person's personal life informs us about attributes to contribute to personal professional success. Dan is committed to law service, law service and leadership. After all, he was an Eagle Scout in his youth. He does not like to bring attention to himself. He often works behind the scenes, is humble, hardworking, and will help anyone. Perhaps that can be attributed to his Norwegian descent, and I know he's proud of that. Dan is creative in his professional work and his personal life. He loves to cook creatively, collect wooden flutes, and actually made a wooden rack for one, and likes to make gifts for his family. He likes to plan, develop, and build, and I'm told he's very handy and can fix anything. While Dan was at Mayo Clinic, he recovered some beautiful old paneling from a renovation at Mayo Clinic. He hauled it around for years, and I understand it finally found a place in his current home. I also understand that when he arrived at UNC, he inherited an office that was walled with an old style paneling that I guess this time he did not like. So he brightened up the place. He showed up one day with paint and tools and covered it in white paint. His coworkers were shocked that the incoming director would do this. So what can we take from this? How can we apply to this professionally? professionally? You, well, Dan, you appreciate things that are well-built and crafted. However, you're also willing to refresh and refurbish. You can combine the new and the old, and you have vision. In your professional life, I have seen you do that time and time again. Under your leadership for SACARP, the subcommittee A, you wrestle with the current regulations to try and figure out what is old and worth keeping, what needs some refurbishing and refreshing, and what may need to be tossed out. You value the well-based principles of the Belmont Report, but you're not afraid to lead, teach, and think creatively and think out of the box. Perhaps this is not all this dissimilar to what you've done with paneling. You are a wonderful colleague, and so many of us respect you in so many ways. When I have a question I cannot answer or want to know what some other IRBs are thinking, I always email or call you. You are a dear friend. You let me drag you to watch the ducks march into the elevator at the end of the day at the Peabody Hotel when we were teaching in Memphis. And I think you liked it. And you recovered and arranged for my cell phone to be returned after I left it in a taxi when we were on our way to the CDC. To conclude, I want to provide some words that your own staff at UNC came up with to describe you. Here they are. Dedicated, collegial, patient, diplomatic, persistent, caring, professional, respectful, diligent, humble. Dan, on behalf of Primer, we admire you professionally and personally. Keep mentoring, teaching, and leading in the world of, world of human subject protection. While this is an award for what you have achieved, we are so looking forward to what is yet to come. On behalf of Primer, congratulations. And please join me at the podium.
Lynn Stiki. Let me read. So I just want to read to you what's on the, uh, the bowl that we gave him. It says, uh, Public Responsibility in Medicine and Research, 2003 Arena Legacy Award presented to Nan Dan Nelson in recognition year of exemplary and long-standing contributions to the Primer community through teaching, mentoring, and leadership, November 7, 2013. Please Thank say you. a few words for us. It turns out that one of the perks of... Thank you. Another one? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that was my you, fault. You sorry. can't speak into the light. <laughs> so it turns out that one of the perks of getting this award is that Primer assigns you with an escort. I've been waiting for nearly 20 years to use the word Ada, Sue, Selwitz, and escort service in the same <laughs> sentence together. So my dreams, my dreams do come true. Seriously, thanks, thanks to Ada Sue for getting me here this morning, to Susan for those kind words and sneaking around, and um, uh, to the Primer Board and for, to, to all of you for honoring me this way. I'm, I'm very grateful, but I'm afraid my friends at Primer have found out what a reluctant um, honoree they have on their hands. We are all products of our upbringing, for better and for worse, and you've already heard through Susan that in my case I'm 100% Norwegian by ancestry. Um, half of my family came to America and half stayed in the old country where my cousins still live on the same fjord where our family lived for hundreds of years and those that came to America settled in a tiny little pocket in the upper Midwest where it was possible for Norwegians to keep marrying Norwegians for <laughs> generations after they came to this country. Um, I can already hear the jokes starting in the audience about how shallow that gene pool must have been. <laughs> Uh, I will say that although 75% of the people in my wedding party all shared the last name of Nelson, um, none of us were related. We all came from different areas of Norway. So there, there was admittedly a lack of diversity growing up in Lake Wobegon. Um, what, what it did give me was a, a strong work ethic, I think, a, a love of snow and winter sports, an appreciation for the leadership capabilities of women. You may wonder why I say that, but it's been several decades since uh, the Prime Minister and 90% of the cabinet in Norway were women, and it's about time for America to follow suit, but that's another convention. <laughs> One, one thing this upbringing did give me certainly was an egalitarian worldview where um, no one was too much better or too much worse than anyone else, which makes it very hard to, to be singled out for an award like this. When, when my mother was laying on her deathbed, one of her last words were, don't make a big fuss over me. And uh, so if those were words to die by, they were certainly words for, for us to live by. And, all of this is to say that it's much more comfortable for me to think and talk about all the good things we have accomplished together as a group rather than anything I've done individually. Um, I think back to my time as arena president, which coincided with uh, the growth seemingly within the space of a year or two from 100 attendees at this conference or a few hundred to a few thousand, and now Primer boasts 4,000 members. Around that same time, we started the poster portion of the program, modeled after the abstract submissions I was used to seeing in scientific meetings and, and grounded on the notion that we needed more ways to share best practices and to have those practices informed by actual data. I think that first year we had a grand total of eight posters, and I think two of them were submitted by me just to make sure we had something to show for ourselves. Um, now there are 100 high-quality posters out here that, that show your own good work and ideas. When a small group of us was gathered together in a stuffy basement room in a hotel in 1999, there was no such thing as a certified IRB professional. And now there are over 2,100 of you out there in the world who have demonstrated your mastery of a body of knowledge through a credible, respected credentialing process. I think of all the missed deadlines and the poking and prodding it took by our intrepid editors to produce the first multi-authored textbook for our field a few years ago. Um, I can remember where I was sitting during the conference calls that we had as Primer was helping to create and launch AHARP and get it off the ground. I specifically remember the call where I had my feet up on my desk as we debated how many A's and H's and R's and P's you could pack into a single acronym and still pronounce it. Um, now there are uh, nearly 200 accredited organizations. And finally, it's gratifying to see us move beyond the we versus them mentality that pervaded our early years uh, between the institute 
institution-based and central or independent IRB world, and I think today we can recognize freely that, that there are many models to accomplish what we're after and room to learn from each other and to collaborate. So I'm proud of, of those things. Uh, collectively, I'm, I'm proud that it's possible to talk about human protections, human research protections as a profession rather than a, a task that you dumped on somebody uh, or the job that you took on the way to something else. Um, I'm proud of the collective effort it took uh, for, from so many of you to get us to this point, and, and I thank you for not making any bigger fuss over me than you already have. With that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>